But I did not listen to my mind and listen to my heart. And I chose subjects that were dreaded in those days. I selected physics, chemistry, math, biology and computer science. The thing was I was excellent in physics, excellent in math, good at computer science, good at biology, but I was terrible at chemistry. And the problem there was, even if I got the 95 percentile in all the other subjects and I failed chemistry, I would never become an engineer. So what I did was, I started, the professors in our school lived on campus. So I started paying attention on chemistry where I was weak. I couldn't balance equations at all to save my life too. It was that difficult for me. And I went night at the wee hours of the night and approached my professors. One was Mr. Shamlal Ganguly, Dr. Shamlal Ganguly and the other was uh, Mr. Vinay Pandey. They were both my chemistry professors during different times. They would offer help at any time. And I never understood their value then because they never told me. But now today I understand the value because someone, if someone comes to me at the middle of the night to balance equations now, I would shut my door on him. And they did not do that. That itself says a great, great deal about great professors. Today when I asked them, they told me, you were young and wanted to learn. We were old and wanted to teach. So that's why I respect my professors for having taught me and after that I did really well in chemistry, in fact better in computer science in the 12th examination. After which I wanted to go to Germany to do my engineering. If I wanted to go to England or America, there would be thousands of people advising me on how to go, what to do, how to go to America, which university. Germany I was totally blank. No one told me anything. The first thing I slept, I, uh, I set foot in Germany the first time. I didn't know the language, I didn't know anything. And I didn't know I had to do another year before I could, <laughs> I had to do my 13th standard before I could start my engineering. So I had to do the 13th standard of schooling in Germany. I had to learn the German language. And all the examinations till the final year were all in German language. That was the difficult part. Otherwise engineering is really easy. But learning the language and answering the questions in a foreign language that you've never heard before. Knowing Sanskrit helped me quite a bit to learn the language. So by mentioning all this, what I'm trying to say is Engineering is all about the heart and not the mind. Only if your heart wants you to do engineering, then go ahead. Otherwise, you will not enjoy it. And if you do not enjoy a subject, you will never experience the fulfillment that you ought to. Sir Sri Vishweshwaraya Ji was a great engineer And he still lives on through all of you and will continue to live on as long as students like you continue to be engineers in the future. He was not only the pride of Karnataka or our state, but he was the pride of the nation and the world. The world was proud to have an engineer such as him. Once, if you go abroad and complete your engineering or whatever that you are doing, always come back to your roots. Never forget your roots. Because only after having served abroad that you return to India, that you really know the value of the Indian soil. And that's when you can achieve that point. Well, let me phrase this in a term that physicians would. You'd achieve the point of a Kano cycle, Kano cycle in your life. You all must be knowing what a Kano cycle is. Uh, does anyone know what a Carnot cycle is? Physics, simple physics. It's basically the most ideal cycle that the laws of physics allow. That's the Carnot cycle. So you have reached the most ideal cycle in your life once you return after having learned immense knowledge from wherever you are, be it India, be it abroad, but never forget your roots. Roots 
are the most important thing. <coughs> and the other thing, this was about engineering. And there are certain engineers who change the face of nations, like Prime Minister Sen of China. In 1910, he engineered the overthrow of the Chinese monarchy and made it the People's Republic of China. He convinced a bunch of European bankers that if they were to finance the Queen of China, Queen of China was very corrupt and so were her courtiers in that time, before 1910. He convinced them that if you give millions of euros and pounds, millions of pounds to the Chinese monarchy, they will make trains and buses and infrastructure that you Europeans will earn money out of. But they will also make weapons of mass destruction with which they will attack you all later on. That convinced the bankers and then the bankers asked Prime Minister Sen, what is your plan of action sir? And Prime Minister Sen said, let a man who has 100 acres have his 99 acres divided between 99 men and only one acre for him. And that's how the communist rule started in China. Well, now it's the People's Republic of China. And the Queen's monarchy was thrown away. He then paid the Queen a huge sum of gold. And the Europeans asked him, why are you doing that? He said, I want to engineer the fate of this nation, not by civil war, but by civil friendship. And that's when the People's Republic of China was born in the year 1910. And that's engineering the fate of a nation. So you can be engineers in any way you want. And Sir Vishwasar ARG taught us that. And we 